people of the internet, welcome to Modern Day Debate. Tonight we are debating Flat Earth, and we are starting right now. I am Kaz, host of the Atheist, Atheist Edge, and we have Wits It Gets It versus Delcos. Tonight each person is going to get 10 minutes for their opening statement and 40 minutes for their open discussion, and then 35 minutes of Q&A. So uh, I believe Del is going to be going first, Del. So at your first word, I will start your timer. The floor is all yours. All right. So um, I was going to start off with a diagram, but my computer does not want to share that screen onto here, so we're not going to do that. Um, instead, I think we're going to take an approach that I've never heard before. I, I don't know. I've listened to a few Flat Earth debates to, in preparation of this. Um, let me my notes. And so there's, a, there's an interesting question I've never heard anyone ask, which is why would it be flat and we would pretend it's a globe? So something that I teach people and myself I use to debunk whatever, um, is you don't think about it as in, can I find evidence for it? You think of it in the sense of what would the world look like if this was a true real thing? And so you, you basically go from the bottom up, right? And so you, you start at flat earth and you imagine we have a flat earth, the earth's flat. If they were trying to hide that, if that was a conspiracy or what, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, why would you come up with a ball as the answer to your conspiracy, right? Why would you use, why would you come up with space and you would put all this effort in? Because if I was a big evil person charge, no matter what I was trying to hide, whether it was extra land or, you know, whatever, God thing doesn't work because most people are religious. So that's a non-starter. But if I was trying to hide something like that, I wouldn't come up with this whole, guys, we live on a ball that spins and then we're going to build thousands of industries that also utilize these facts every day that's silly you would just say something like well across the ice wall is super radioactive you can't go there problem solved I mean, you, don't, you can stop there's no expiration everybody believes you anyway you're like there you go so from the get-go it's fairly goofy um i i don't have any other words besides goofy i'm trying i don't know if this is a family-friendly stream but coming from that point of view of a fresh person it's like i don't I don't even see why you would make the Earth flat, right? If you're trying to hide, you could check Antarctica for yourself. You could take a boat. You can go around it. You don't need to go on it. You can just sail around it and just keep it in view. And if it's giant, you're going to notice, wow, guys, we've been sailing for like a while and we've still not reached the end of this ice wall, right? But no, we can go around it. You don't need a permit to go around it when it's in view. You can use binoculars, a telescope, whatever, and just circle around it. There's no need to go in it. Um, so, yeah, that's just, it would be interesting to have that address because I feel that all the flat earth arguments have already been, the science ones have already been repeated again and again. And there's, it's, it's, a, it's an old debate, if that makes sense. There's no real new ground to tread on that. So I guess the question would be for this is, why would it be flat? Why, why would we come up with this whole thing, right? So I, I make, um, I guess I could say, uh, autonomous inertial compensation for, for bipedal locomotion platforms. We were in the RoboCup uh, 2014 for the full size, which are like four foot tall. I have part of it back there, way back there. This is a garage, sorry. Um, and they use things like gravity, not only for compensating for downward uh, forces, but also side to side, which is not density because it's not bi-directional or well, it's down, right? If it was density and buoyancy, it would be going like that. But it also applies, right, side to side. So that's also something that needs to be addressed. But the main, the main thing I'm interested in hearing about is why would you come up with a globe concept to hide a flat Earth for whatever reason? I, the reason is it's it's not necessary. We're assuming there are people in charge hiding the shape of the Earth for. God, money, Jesus, whatever. Why would they choose this shape? Why would you have companies, I think Sony actually, uh, in a few months, is releasing microsatellites that you yourself can pay to have time on and do whatever. You can take pictures. Uh, I think for a certain price, they let you send up your own. I would use a CubeSat for that, but that's not relevant. Uh, the point is you can use it to take pictures yourself of whatever you want. It's, you know, there's all these thousands of different things that rely on this and it's very silly if this was a conspiracy to go we're not only going to make this completely weird because the geometry is not the same at all we're not only going to do that we're going to make it so that we use it constantly for everything
everything. And not only that, we're going to permit private companies to go explore it. And I guess in the flat earth view, pretend to go do that. So they're just burning their own money because they're private companies. I don't, I mean, I guess uh, maybe they're in on it, but they can't be bribed. You're not going to bribe Musk. You, he has more money than God. What are you going to tell him? You know? So I don't understand that. That's also very silly. But I think the main point here is the shape. Why would you say it's flat if it's not flat? Right? If you're trying to cover up whatever, why would you use a flat earth for that? Why would you use a globe earth for that? And I think that's about all I got on that. Got four minutes left. I don't know if I can oh. well, you, hand those you over. Can, uh, hand it over if you like. That's fine. Yeah, okay, I, we'll I, go I ahead and that. Great. Okay, we'll go it's ahead and take over to Austin for his uh, ten minute opening statement. Austin, uh, the floor is all yours. It's your first word. All right. How's it going? Um, let me let me go over here and show my show my slideshow, and I'm going to share if that's cool. All right. Cool. And that was. Um, that was cool, man. We'll get into it. So uh, we were all told that the Earth is a ball that's moving through space. That was a bit exaggerated, of course. But anyway, so the question is, is the Earth moving? I wanted to throw this in here. This is hilarious to me. There's a quote from Einstein. The gift of fantasy has meant more to me than my talent for observing or absorbing positive knowledge. And that's because the heliocentric model is a fantasy. Hence why it changes every couple of days. But uh, another quote from him, I never made one of my discoveries through the process of rational thinking. What is it about cosmology that would completely dismiss rationale? I don't know. That seems weird. Um, I covered this the last time. I'm going to kind of breeze through this part, but this is the infamous Mickelson-Morley. It's called the most famous felt experiment in history. I showed actually that the earth wasn't moving. So to answer one of your questions, why would they, why would they stick to this idea of space and all that? Well, it's called the cosmological principle which is the idea that the Earth cannot occupy a special or unique position in the universe. If it does, of course, that has uh, serious philosophical implications. So they came up with a whole new physics that space is the fourth dimension and stuff been warped, but you can't tell, blah, blah, blah. Here's him talking about it. Since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by the any optical experiment. Though the Earth is revolving around the sun, it's him admitting he believes it but can't prove it. Here he is also saying that you can't use any terrestrial experiments to do that. Um, and every attempt to try to detect the orbit of the Earth was negative result. Here is another quote I found recently from him. Uh, and I think it's funny because people get really triggered when I bring up quotes. I, I don't know why. I'm just like articulating the position that you guys hold. Anyway, uh, but when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made in particular by your compatriot, I guess, uh, Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on Earth that it moves but that everything takes place on Earth as if, as if the Earth is in a state of rest. So according to the current paradigm, we're actually tilted, wobbling, gyrating, spinning, revolving around the sun, shooting through space, but everything takes place as if it was at rest. So if someone can't actually absorb that that's what they believe, it, it puts me in this weird, awkward position where I have to defend, or you have to like have to argue with you about what you believe. We can't even get to the actual substance of the conversation. So hopefully we can surpass that tonight. Here's an infamous observation. It's called the Black Swan. The horizon should be 1.2 miles away. The, the camera was just over the water. Uh, you see the horizons beyond the furthest uh, platform there, almost 10 miles away, which would require a radius of 264,000 miles. It's just weird. I mean, people just say the word refraction. They don't understand it. They don't know what terrestrial fraction is or how we guide it. They just say it. They just say a word. It's like a religion, you know, like you get words and phrases and you chant them from the stands and then you pass around the donation plate. Anyway, um... Here is a first radio transmission sent across the Atlantic Ocean. Um, Marconi, they told him that he wouldn't be able to send it more than 200 miles because the curvature of the Earth would block it. He actually sent it 2,200 miles successful the first transmission using a horizontal propagation over the ocean. Since then, we've actually done them, and even he did them, as far as 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles, horizontal propagation. The curvature of the Earth should have blocked it at 200 miles. Super awkward. People also say, why, don't, why doesn't Winston ever bring flat earth evidence? Uh, that's what this is. So pay attention to this part, please. Instead of just saying I didn't bring evidence, let's pay attention to the positive evidence that I'm, I'm putting forth here instead of just hand-waving it. It's awkward. All right, so uh, plane survey data, right? So plane surveying is a survey in which the Earth's surface is assumed to be a plane, and the curvature of the Earth is ignored. Survey works up to 100 square miles, and they, our surveys that are up to 100 square miles are treated as a plane. 
So this is how we actually make measurements on the Earth. This is how we have those maps you guys are so proud of. Uh, plane surveys are carried out for engineering projects on sufficiently large scale to determine relative or positions of individual features of the Earth's surface. Plane surveys are used for the layout of highways, railways, canals, fixing boundary pillars, construction of bridges, factories, etc. The scope and use of plane surveys is very wide. For majority of engineering projects, plane surveying is the first step to execute them. Plane surveys are basically needed for proper economical and accurate planning of all engineering projects and their practical significance cannot be uh, overestimated. So that's how we actually do things in the real world. So how is this not positive evidence? If you're making a claim antithetical to we have to survey the earth as if a plane to build everything, if you're claiming it's actually not that, you, you have a substantial burden of proof. It is, this is objectively positive evidence <laughs> that the earth is a plane. I know it's uncomfortable, but whatever. Uh, here's something seen from 163 miles away. There should be 10,000 uh, feet of curvature blocking these mountains, and you can see them. And in fact, you can see them once the sun goes up behind them, and you see the outline, the silhouette of it. These should be completely blocked. Why can't we see the mountains? See, we just went out and tested the earth, bro. It's it's not what they said. Don't make it awkward, right? Like, here's Chicago from like uh, 70 plus miles away. Why can't we see all of it? It should all be blocked based on the curvature of the earth. As soon as the sun goes down behind it, you can see it. I talked to locals here. They said that you see it all the time. You see it three or four times a week. Here's a military uh, document, propagation of electromagnetic fields over a flat earth for ground weapon systems. It's actually a, a weapon system the military uses, and they treat it as a flat earth, a dielectric plane specifically. So why? Why, why would you not account for curvature if you're using a weapon system? Uh, here's a laser test. We see far beyond the curvature of the earth like we always do. Here is a question that people love to ask. How could you have things disappear bottom up if the earth was flat? Well, you can have a lensing effect right here. You will see that the sun you, on the right is moving towards you up above the table, but it looks like it's coming from the bottom up from behind the mountains. So it's very simple. Here's the sun it actually uh, disappears into the horizon, not behind a physical curved horizon. You can see it. It disappears up above the water into the horizon, which is the vanishing point. So that's not a physical location. So to say it is, is weird. So I'm going to breeze through some of these because these are what we always get. And um, fallacies, logical fallacies are, you know, an invalidation of your argument. Okay. So if you appeal to the authority saying, well, this authority said it, it must be true. That's a fallacy. Uh, if you say, Witsit well, doesn't have the proper credentials to talk about this. So his argument must automatically be wrong. That's a fallacy. Poisoning the well. So, oh, all flat earthers think this. Flat earthers think everyone's lying. Flat earthers are the same one that didn't inject themselves with 47 boosters. Whatever you say to discredit that side's position preemptively, it's called poisoning the well, which if you saw my debate with conspiracy cats, that was his opening argument. Okay, that's a fallacy. You got it. Everyone knows ad hominem fallacies. I'm bringing these up because they are reoccurring. It's like Groundhog Day every time I debate on here. A bunch of fallacies. So if you attack the person instead of the argument, that's an ad hoc fallacy. Texas sharpshooter fallacy is like what they do with geodetic surveying. You basically draw a circle on the wall, then shoot the, or you actually you shoot your gun at the wall, then you walk over there and draw your target around where you shot. So that's not like you didn't actually hit the target. Geodetic surveying does this by throwing out lots of the measurements. So that may come up most of the time when people say there's evidence of curvature, this is what they do. Uh, there's a false dilemma fallacy also referred to as a false dichotomy or false binary. Um, or an all or nothing fallacy saying, well, it has to be this way or there's no other way. That comes up a lot as well. Appeal to emotion is one of the biggest ones we get. And that's just fallacious. Like, you're like, oh man, um, you know, there's no way everyone could be lying. Or, oh man, you think everything's a lie or whatever it is. You're appealing to emotion. That's fallacious. This is the biggest one, though. And we have what, a minute 40 left. Shifting the burden of proof. Now, I say the earth's a plane. They're like, you have to burn a proof as a positive claim. That is a positive claim. And saying the earth is flat is a positive claim as well. And that is flat is not a shape. That's a description of a surface. Okay. Like I told you, we substantiate that every day with plane survey. That's how we do engineering. So we have substantiated that we treat the earth as a plane. We measure it as a plane. We shoot radio transmissions as if the earth are a plane, et cetera. You guys are claiming that the earth is actually not a plane though. It's a spinning ball that's curving, flying through a vacuum. So you have the burden of proof. You have to substantiate that positive claim that's antithetical to empirical evidence. You have to substantiate to us. We were all told the same thing. We used to believe the same thing that you think, right? So we just 
we would love some evidence for your claim instead of shifting it over to us. Oh, where's your model, Austin? Well, she just gave birth. So a pill from incredulity is basically like, oh, I can't understand how the earth could be flat. So it couldn't be that. A fallacy. Argument at populum. Everyone thinks the earth's a ball. Fallacy. Straw man fallacy is one of the most popular ones. If the earth was flat, this should happen. This should happen. This is how it works on a flat earth. Which it thinks this. Flat earthers say this. If you're not representing the actual position or argument, that's a straw man fallacy, also known as one of the most dishonest fallacies that exist. Red herring fallacy, very common fallacy in these debates. If I bring something up and then you shift it over to make it look like it's part of the subject, but actually you're changing the subject, red herring fallacy invalidate your argument. Uh, we don't have much time. Begging the question, it's a logical fallacy in which an argument's premise assumed the truth of the conclusion. If we assume the Earth's a ball, then look at the sky. Then look, the, what we assume matches the sky because that's how we came up with the ball. Therefore, Earth's a ball. That's a fallacy. And so basically, in summary, the use of fallacious arguments, especially with the intention of deceiving, is the definition of sophistry. So I would hope maybe we can have an honest uh, conversation void of fallacies, and I think it'll be much more productive uh, than usual. So that's pretty much all I got. Cool, cool. Right, awesome. Before we... Thank you so oh, much. Okay. Is it open now? It's open time? No, not yet. Let me, uh, let me oh. just give my little spiel here real quick. Um, so thank you so much for your opening statements, guys. Uh, before we kick into the opening uh, discussion real quick, I just want to say that if it's your first time here with us at Modern Day Debates, that we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics, and we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. And if you have a question or a comment for one of tonight's debaters, please fire into the old live chat and uh, be sure to tag me at Modern Day Debate. Uh, super chats will go to the top of the list. Um, all we ask that you please not uh, you please attack the argument and not the person. Insults will not be read, and that goes for the general discourse in the live chat as well. Uh, our invaluable moderators are working tirelessly to elevate the conversation, so please show them and each other the respect you deserve. Um, our guests are linked in the description below, whether you're listening on YouTube or via the podcast. So click their links if you like what you're hearing. Check them out as soon as you can, and hit the subscribe button. We have plenty more debates coming your way that you don't want to miss, including uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Daniel Hikikachu will be squaring off with J.F. Garipe to discuss religion, race, and society. So you don't want to miss that. Please subscribe immediately. And with that, we will kick into the open discussion. Gentlemen, at your first word, I will start your timer for 40 minutes. All right. So before we get anything else, are you saying that the sun, like it does this? Like it stops and it disappears into something? I don't know. You showed a picture of where it's hovering above the horizon. I get what you're saying, but like, what do you say is it what like i don't know there's like what, what the hell is that supposed to be are you yeah, saying it goes say like disappears into clouds no, but i don't get what you're trying to say clouds, with that though. there wasn't any clouds there what are you talking about you showed a picture of the sun over the ocean or something right yeah. and it was hovering over it right it looked like it was disconnected like this like it was a little gap yeah so what are you saying is happening at that point Exactly. I don't. It's what disappearing are you... into the vanishing point of the atmosphere, right? But you guys claim that it disappears behind the curve of an Earth. That proves that actually it'll disappear, have nothing to do with the curve of the Earth. And many people say uh, the sunset's impossible on a flat Earth, which is just really ignorant. And you can go look at the sun that it, it disappears above the horizon. So that was that's the point. Is just to show to preemptively address the denialism. Uh, it was just it was very. A very interesting picture with a, a different uh, story behind it. I didn't understand what you were talking about for a sec. You All agree right, it so didn't go behind the curve of the Earth in that video, though. Do what? You agree it's clearly not going like behind. Some well, it is, but it's it's hidden behind it. Like that's the point of refraction, and I have a, a wonderful bank of uh, clips talking about how refraction is very important. Refraction. If you would like to hear them. What's up? Refraction made the sun disappear. Well, it's, it affects light, and what does the sun emit? It makes things disappear. But what does the sun emit? How do you see the sun with l l light? How did it make Correct? it disappear, though? Because of refraction over the horizon. Well, I don't know why this is difficult. That's I don't understand happened. why this is hard. I understand refraction well, very well. I know, but I don't understand this, the concept of what you're trying to say. I don't get. I don't get what you're trying to say. It's doing. It okay, but it's a, the is the sun the physical atmosphere. or not? Is the sun a physical thing, or do you I think it's a question. plasma? I don't, I don't, I don't think you don't know. Okay. Material. So you don't have a view on it either way. Okay. So that's not, yeah, you just believe be what was said helpful. to you though. Like, why do well, you believe no, what because you think about the sun? I have a friend that works at ADS or ALS, I guess. So they launch things like CubeSats and they even do ESPN the class satellites. What? You went to the sun? 
No, it doesn't need to go to the sun. So if we get out of Earth, then the flat Earth is gone. What are you talking about? If we have a thing in space, and I can pay some dude that I know $10,000 to put one of the tests I've done into space, I don't care. That's it. And you can't falsify all that information. You can't take something that me or another engineers built and then say, oh, well, actually, it doesn't do that. You can't trick people who build things. You can't go to ALS and say, I need you to launch this CubeSat that my class has been building for a year into space and then falsify data. Like, what? do you realize how many are sent up in, in like an ESPA class satellite? Do what? In geostationary? No, 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 no. CubeSat, it's a, it's a, there's thousands of private companies, but my friend works for us, ALS, and we contract with them sometimes because we do robotics projects. And so they send up hundreds of CubeSats that are built by colleges and personal use, which is what I did one time. It was, it's a, it's twelve to $10,000 to build one. There's kits online and then you contract them. They even do brokerage accounts now. So you can get it like basically for, I don't know. I don't know what Tesla charges or whatever Elon thing? shit. No, it's a satellite. It's just a tiny box. Are geostationary, man. I know, but these aren't. That's what I'm saying. They're tiny boxes, mm -hmm. and they orbit the Earth, and you can put whatever, I mean, within reason, whatever you want on it, no weapons or anything. Okay. And they're sent up hundreds at a time by college, miscellaneous people, and you can't just, like, do you think they're capturing them in, like, a net in the rocket before they hit the dome, and then they, like, bring them to a secret lab and just, like, falsify all the information for these thousands? Nah. Because they're launched you know, constantly. I covered straw man fallacy. Well, that's not a straw man. That's a question. I don't know how yeah, you explain clearly, the, like, the hundreds and thousands of things that get sent up. Like, per year, it's a private okay. company. These Why aren't can't governments. can't send stuff up on a flat Earth? What? Because can't you can't orbit a flat Earth. Earth. What? what do you mean? What? How would you orbit a flat Earth? Uh, it would yeah, look wonky also. Of satellites have you seen... Projection? Do you know what a globe? I don't even have a ball next. Oh, I have a moon. Oh my god! Do you know what a moon versus a flat thing looks like from above it? You can tell yeah. the shape from above with like you can, really. It's not yes, really. So you, you can tell the shape of two the, objects. The shape of the Earth is what you're saying. Yes, because the wow. math is needed. You can't just shoot them up and go. Oh God! I hope it gets into orbit, guys. We did too many calculations. I hope it circles, hits that. Dude. It goes I know. In circles. What's it? You have to do. Lots and lots of catches before you even touch the satellite. You can't just shoot it up and go, okay, guys, I hope it hits whatever. I hope it starts floating around. Like, it's not just blindly shot up, right? We, we know what we're doing. That's yeah, the problem. Circles. Okay. So, it? hey, hey, can I ask you some questions, though, man? So sure. we can, like, go so ahead. Just, let's just Ooh, get the light. big part. Of, let's get the big part of it out of here, okay? It's so, kind of cool. So, like, um, it's a lamp. You just kind of believe the story you were told, right? Well, no, because first off, I have a personal connection with the person who runs the company. And second no, off, no, 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 no. the, the, the amount... General, dude. What do you mean? Like, you just believe the story of the Earth in general because that's kind of like what's accepted and what you were told, right? Have you ever tested Are you talking about Earth? overall? Yeah, yeah. I'm or trying this to get specific topic? Oh, you're trying just to go map. broadly as in like the whole field. Well, I just want to see where about. we are. We only have a few minutes. I want to see... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you agree that, like, for one, falsifications independent of replacement, the globe Earth's a positive claim we were all told. You can go mm, test it. I don't know about that. The, Why not? So, because there's, again, hundreds of thousands of companies. There's millions of people that rely on these. Oh, Amazon launches CubeSats now. That's cool. Um, there's thousands of companies that do this. There's millions of humans that work with these concepts every day. That's not one guy saying, guys, I saw Bigfoot in the forest. That's like I'm not corporations that, building know, their entire – like they get paid millions of dollars per launch to, to bring these boxes into space. You can't I'm just I'm not say, denying that stuff goes in the sky, man. How many times I got to say that? It's not going in the sky. It's, it's it orbiting is. and it's projected. And you can see it. You can track them and then you can go, hey, guys, my thing that I built that I'm getting this data from, usually through SSTV because that's really cheap, I am getting it through this. It will be above this spot at this time. Here's the orbited path that it's taken, and I can look okay. up and I can get a transmission line yeah. of sight from it. Right. Yeah. Have so you ever the seen the path projected on a flat projection? Yes, it's like this. It's goofy. And again, no, it's a perfect. It's a perfect again, flower of life. Like well, the no, ISS depends. is a perfect a sacred geometry. It's a so what? You can have an orbit no, over a plane. I missed the word. I missed the word. What you said? It, 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 it's, it's like a the ISS, what? for example, has like a sacred geometric trajectory over a flat projection you can have things i have no idea of what plane. sacred geometry means. all right man this is what i'm trying to <laughs> okay <laughs> no, about this. About this. what is your response to my presentation 
You, what, did the you press, oh, I did take game notes game. on that. So first off, where did you get all those Einstein quotes? Because they're very From well Einstein. done. But did you make the pictures yeah, or what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, you should go into that then. That's actually you might make some money doing like inspirational quotes or something. Those are pretty, I don't do this for money. Man. Those were pretty. No, no, not flat earth, just in general. Because those quotes were pretty. Thank you, man. So, so first off, for the first one, it goes. What is it? An optical experiment? Well, no, you can't use an optical. It doesn't matter. That's the key word. So you're at least you know you're cutting out this whole section. Yeah, okay. He said right. optical. That's not what about the terrestrial experiment? experiment quote. In the next quote, he says any terrestrial experiment, which means any experiment on the Earth. For what rotation or the shape of the Earth? For motion of the Earth. For motion of the Earth, as in rotation or as in scooting around space. Well, he there's says multiple that... motions that it's doing. Yeah, it's not just yeah, he... spinning. The orbit, he says that the rotation is either the sky moving or the earth moving. They're interchangeable coordinate systems. They're identical. They're not physically different at all. So the way that so you talk about orbit, you're saying you can't measure orbit from, from down here is what yeah, you're saying. It's, yeah, it's impossible to tell okay. if we're actually orbiting. Well, I mean, I suppose with one reference frame, no, you can't. But we don't have just one reference frame, so that's irrelevant. Well, well, on the earth, we only have one. So you're saying we have to believe in outer space travel, right? Well, I don't have to believe in it because I know the fucking person that does it. <laughs> oh, see, we always know. go back to that. This will always revert to you don't know because you haven't seen it. Yes, because I've said things with people that like colleges, like groups do this. This is a thing. It will always How revert to that. How far in space topic. do they go, bro? I have no clue. It depends on the system. Okay. ESPA goes up to about. Let's see. Uh -huh. I don't know how do they numbers. verify the distance? Like I've actually debated uh, an aerospace engineer and I've actually talked to people. Well, I'm not an aerospace engineer. Said. Like I said, it's my friend's company. I do robotics projects. I don't do aero. I think space is cool. I do this for entertainment. I don't really care about space. And that's another thing is like, if the earth was flat, oh my God. if the earth was, the Alexa, water. stop it. Alexa, tell the earth, them the earth is flat. <laughs> don't, don't ask that. If, <laughs> Completely lost what I say now. It's okay. Why can we send radio oh, transmissions well. 10,000 miles horizontally? <laughs> well, it depends on the radio transmission. Also, horizontally as in it would be shooting off the edge, or horizontally as in if I'm here, if I'm here and I want to send a transmission here, I can go like that? That's not horizontal. I hit the curve. What's it? I'm talking about if there's two people, right? If we're two people here, right? Let's do Get it on a flat curve. first. Let's do it on a flat earth first. Okay. So if we're two people and we're standing right here, mm -hmm. are you saying that, like, this is, imagine this is 10,000 miles or whatever. You're yeah. saying that they can send a transmission across, right? Yes. Okay. So if it's on a ball, the surface of the ball is still horizontal. It's like when you fly in a plane. It's still horizontal because you're keeping with that. That's like, that's, I don't, what? No. What no, do you mean? No, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. So like, I think, <laughs> go ahead. trust me, I got you, man. You'll get I don't, there, but I so don't like know. In a plane, very... in a plane that the story is in a plane, we fly like the earth is horizontal, right. but it's just because it's locally flat and it's level and it's maintained by gravity. That's bending us around a ball. This doesn't yes. work with radio transmission. No, no, but that was my analogies. I'm trying to say is that's what you're saying. doesn't work with radio on, though. It's flat is what I'm saying on the flat earth. You're going like this. You want right? me to tell you what your side's answer is? So then you can sure, tell me if ahead. you believe it. So so they sent it 2,200 miles. It was supposed to get blocked by the curve of the Earth at 200 miles. And it didn't. So what they did, they then came up with the idea of the ionosphere. And they say that the radio waves go up into the sky, and then they bounce up and down. Yeah, but that's not horizontally, what's it? You said horizontally. I know about ionic bounces. And yeah, I know so about Earth and Earth bounces as well. But that's not line of sight. You are bouncing it directly up and then back down. No, that's not how we Just shoot Just like when them, you though. do it to the moon, you can do an Earth moon uh, Earth bounce, which is also something that's very interesting. And well, only listen, works man. when the moon is there. Marconi shot them, yeah, shot the radio nice. transmission horizontally using line of sight. He didn't account for anything to do with the ionosphere. They didn't even know it existed. And the first attempt, it was, it was received 2,200 miles away. So then they came up with the idea of the ionosphere because they're like, there's no way it should have done that if the Earth is a ball. So then they're like, oh, well, if, it, if it's going horizontally, the Earth's going to drop underneath it, which means it's going to start going up to space. So it must have bounced back down. So it was just an Are you talking about a specific experiment? Yeah, Marconi's radio transmissions, the first long distance it... radio transmission over okay. the Atlantic Ocean. I have no idea how you do it other than shooting it upwards. You could bounce it off a satellite. You could do whatever you want. I have no idea what you're talking about with the other. Well, we can move on. But that debunks but again, me. the Earth, Moon, Earth bounce while we're on radios is a thing that is done by amateurs constantly. Really? Really? Really. 
You have verification really. of that? Yes. In fact, I talked to Toon because I just did a oh ISS. <laughs> I just met him recently. I did an ISS. Yes, uh, you could actually get an SSTV signal from the space station if you have a big enough antenna. And I have nasty old computers over there that are from like 2004 with a ton of old software on them. And uh, we got it. And I'm going to be putting it on my YouTube channel in a few minutes. And basically, they send out, do you know what SSTV is? Do you know what that? SSTV? SSTV is a way of transmitting images. Ba oh. Like very, very. Okay. It's a very basic way of sending pictures, is all you need to know for this. Okay. So you can actually get a picture that they send, and it has a timestamp. It takes a picture of, it's usually whatever, it's of crew members of the Earth. They take a picture, and then you can actually receive it based on when the ISS is there. And you can get that image. It'll render it out. It's not really rendering, whatever. It'll throw it out, and then you have it. And it matches up exactly with where it is, what time they say it's going to be, and it also shows what they're saying. Oh, my so, gosh, bro. Okay, what? so you don't. Have, oh my okay, gosh! Okay. I said, what do you want other than that? Which that I got a picture. I asked directly you for verification sent. that people send yes. radio transmissions off the moon, and you brought up an anti-flat earther on the internet, bro. How come every you, time no, I no. want some actual wanted, verification? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it's it? Some I weird didn't say he did it. What's it? What's it? I didn't say that. I said you did. I was talking to him because he was interested in getting my footage. It has, he is irrelevant. I asked you how you this. verified it. And you I said, know. I I'm, to I'm telling you, yes. I talked to Toon because he was very interested in this as well. Because he does flat earth stuff. And he contacted and we discussed it because it's very interesting. And it's something that you can reproduce on your own with the correct equipment. And it's, you know, a thing. Okay. Like, you could do it. It's not, it's not, you have to go into a secret NASA bunker. He and, hasn't like, Take drugs. I'm not talking about Toon. I don't care. No about one's him. done it. Everyone says I have that done anyone it. can do it. You can go on YouTube and see other people that have done it. You we stand out there. Yes, I have. I oh, stand yeah. out there with my fucking radio and my giant ass antenna on my back, and you can hear it come in. And then you take that data that came exactly when it was said to come out, and I come to this old computer and I run it through what is it, RTSS TV, and it generates the whole thing and it shows me the picture. I got the it's just sound. It is transmitted from that. I went out into a field, grabbed it, recorded it on just a normal MP3 player, and brought it back to the computer, and it shows what it should show. Like what I, it should how show, you get, meaning yes, what? Meaning not a flat Earth. That doesn't I, make any what sense. Do you want to do that? What do you mean it doesn't make sense? First it's, of all, if you could you, send... Hold on. I'm going to go on YouTube right oh, now Del, and type in... Hey, Dell. Hey, Dell. Do me a favor. Hey, what? Um, just try to give uh, what's it a little bit more time to respond. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to overtalk you. Sorry, what's it? A little bit high, okay. but it's okay. <laughs> I, yeah, could, a little bit of boost. If you could send radio waves to the moon, I wouldn't debunk the, the flat Earth anyway, but uh, because like plasma interacts with radio transmission, right? If it was something like that. But the truth is that people claim it a lot, but did you shoot it away from the moon and see if you got anything back? No. Did like, Yes, every that's a someone, standard standard operation that's part of the teaching experience everyone's because knows. it has to be very precise yeah. <laughs> let's say with the lasers when you shoot a laser at the moon you can shoot at the reflectors or the moon itself the moon is a really shit received but you can actually send data if you hit the reflectors just right and you can get it back with an acceptable range of clarity it's one it's a no thing 30 million no, no, no. i'm talking about if you hit the reflectors specifically on the moon you can target it you can not just hit the moon you can move over a little bit and if you're lucky, you'll hit the reflectors. And in that case, you get usable. You can send up a data packet and you can receive data that's somewhat usable, which tells you that it, it came back. It's not just some miscellaneous thing that's over. And then what you do is you point it away from the moon, even a fraction of it, and then you shoot it. And then I guess aliens find it like 10,000 years later, but you don't receive anything back. And that is, again, showing that it's something physical. I just Googled on YouTube, ISS, SSTV. That's all you do. And there's like thousands of results. The first result is some cop holding a ham radio. Officer Josh does an ISS transit. And there you go. And he gets the image. Curiosity oh, so it's not the moon. Rover. It's the ISS? What? So now we're not talking about the moon. We're talking about no, the no. ISS. From from the ISS, the SSTV, you said, I haven't done it myself. Oh. Yes, I have. And also, you can go on YouTube. Some dude did it with a Baofeng, some cheap, like, $30 radio in his phone. Like, it's not that something's difficult. up in the sky that they call the ISS. But, it's, but, okay, so I need to, okay. So it's not just something's in the sky. It's, this is what NASA says. This will be in this spot at this time. And it's very precise. I know, I'll track Very it. precise. Yeah. We're not looking at the ISS. I want to make, I'm not using a telescope. Okay, that's not what we're doing. We go out, I go out in the field, I have a backpack, the giant antenna, and I have my radios. 
and we go out there exactly what it says, and we get an SSTV signal, which sounds like a screeching dog. And you get that signal, and then you come back, and you put it through RX SSTV. I think that's what it's called. I haven't used it in a long time. And it's right there, and you it generates using that sound. This is how we send images. And it takes whatever image they decided to send at the time. Sometimes it's a crew member, like an ID card. Sometimes it's a picture of Earth. You can get whatever. It's varied. It's not standardized to what I know. It might be. I don't know. But the point is, we're not just looking up and saying, look, there's a thing in the sky. We are getting something back from it that we would expect okay. at the same time that we would expect. I've tracked it. I know that you can track it and it's where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be. This is the thing. You brought up the moon then you you, you subtly shifted it over to the ISS. I never denied well, the I ISS. Told you about the I would moon, much rather it. talk about the actual subject, which is this. Is the Earth a ball that spins in a vacuum? And is the Earth surface curving? And I asked you about radio transmission, plane survey data, long distance laser tests. Like, can we well, talk about... What's it? I don't care about any of that stuff because I, I don't know about, about that stuff. Evidence. I know about the satellites that my friend sends up that go around the curve of the Earth. I, I know, know about, about my the friend radio in the who said that the I use. Flat. Well, I don't know him. What's it? See what I'm this saying? Is, you see that's what I'm one dude. Yes, I am seeing what you're saying because that's one dude in the military as opposed to a multi million dollar company that has thousands of clients that do this every day. There is a difference. You can't equate the two, those no, aren't the same thing. You're dependent, Those are your claim is dependent different. upon me denying you can put stuff up in the sky, and I don't what do you deny mean? that. I'm not denying you put stuff in the sky. I'm I know sure someone that puts satellites in the sky and says giant, Earth's flat, bro. You could get a giant suction cup and stick it to the dome. I'm not saying you can't do that on a flat Earth. What I'm, I'm saying, saying, I'm not saying that's your point. I'm just saying as an analogy. I'm not saying you can't put things in the sky on flat Earth. That's it. I'm telling you, it's not just up in the sky. It is a known location, and it's getting... Man, man. It's getting the not only the location data, but all of the experience. Because you can put on whatever experiment you want. It's not standardized. It's not you have to do this camera this direction and you can't do it otherwise. You can do whatever the hell you want to do as long as it's not a gun. And you can put it up into space. You can take pictures of whatever the hell you want. You can do any kind of sampling you want. I don't think you're allowed to return them to Earth yet, but you can eventually, I think, with the this dual manifest. True, Why are you spreading misinformation on the internet? What's it? What's it? You can go, I can give you his email right now. Please you do. can go and you can ask him, hey, I want to send up a CubeSat. What is the estimated cost? And then he will give it to you and you could crowdfund it. It's not that, ex you guys bought like, a, didn't you buy like a $20,000 gyros? Not you, oh, man, flatter look, things. Look, this is my way. Can I, you can look, crowdfund that and send it up yourself. It's no, cheap. You're talking a lot about something that doesn't prove anything. I'm trying to be patient, but like- That's it. Listen carefully, man. Please go ahead, listen go carefully. Ahead. Listen go carefully. Ahead. You're saying things that aren't true. You're saying going into space. You, and then I asked you how high did they go? You said you don't know. The truth is that there That's are very relevant, specific though. regulations about how high you can put something up in the sky. So you're just yes, saying which is words why that isn't you true. Do it through a known corporation that and they have to that. adhere to the law. Yes, but that's why you use them with it. Because okay, they how do high with they all go? the bullshit. And how I can just go? I don't care. It doesn't it's matter. It's not relevant. It's it. If I said that, if I pay some jackass ten thousand dollars and they take this little satellite with a camera, this is a Lego Harry Potter. It's what I have on my desk, and I shoot that bitch up here, and it's circling the goddamn Earth, and it takes a picture. It's gonna show what it's gonna show. There's no I, what like. There's no argument. Like, it takes a picture with his little Harry Potter glasses, and he goes, wow, guys, look at this. I privately paid this other private company to look at the Earth, and that is what it shows. Like You can't what? go high enough to take a full picture of the Earth with a private What's satellite. What's weather balloons go high enough to take pictures of the Earth? Okay, see what I'm saying? You see, the, the, just for the audience, What's he's it? claiming that somehow this proves oh, the Earth's a globe. Yes. And it objectively doesn't. And I ask him how high is it? He doesn't care. Now yes, he's saying that that's weather balloons, relevant. weather balloons go high enough. They don't. Okay. Like according to they your do. model's math, you would have to be hundreds of miles. In fact, What's according it? to your model's math, you couldn't see the curvature of the Earth from the ISS, which is 255 miles up. So I would love and even to see those numbers. According to Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? You wouldn't see it. Now you guys disagree with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't care Tyson, about Tyson. Right? Yeah, he's right. You idiot. disagree with the mainstream he's an scientific idiot. communicator. He's yeah. not a main. He's a communicator. Nobody, I, said that. I am in a scientific field for real. He has never been mentioned one time. He is a he guy that stands that. up. He doesn't, though. He's a guy that goes up on stage and talks out his ass, and he's a jackass. I don't care about what he says. He's stupid. He's but smart. You just admitted you don't even know the math. He's, you some, know the he's smart. 
the height is irrelevant. If it takes How? a picture and I see a goddamn ball, it's a ball. It doesn't matter if it's 20 feet up or 50,000 feet up. If I see a ball, when I take a picture of a camera with a camera that does not have a fisheye lens, it's a mm -hmm. ball. You mean it doesn't about matter. It? it doesn't matter if I go from here and take a picture. This is a test tube. This will always be a test tube. No matter from here or here or here. That was weird. Or here or here. It, it does not change. And you can go on YouTube. I think it's called Mage or something. The Mage 2 thing. And yeah. they put strings across so you know it's not warping. Yeah. Right? I know all about it. And then what, yeah, what did it show with it? What did the picture show? It shows what did the video? Actually, it's like an hour long. Yeah, the strings actually are slightly uh, distorted and the horizon is not in the middle of frame and the camera is angled. So the truth of the matter is that you get curvature, you get convexity with any lens. It doesn't have to be a fisheye lens, a rectilinear lens. Any lens is a circle. Okay, that's What's in it? fact, they imitate the eyes, right? So you have a circumference right. of light, you have a circumference of vision, you have an arc of vision, you have imposed convexity of any lens. And that's you can prove this by once the balloon goes up and down, it changes. That's because the angle of view combined with the convexity of the lens causes is like an illusion of convexity for you to say that that somehow proves the earth's a ball when i'm talking about physical tangible empirical measurements on the surface that prove it's not one that's insane to me that doesn't make any sense to me so we're gonna do a litmus test do you know what a pinhole camera is what's it and yeah. why that would be important to have on a satellite i know what a, i don't know i know a pin, what a pinhole camera is. okay so lens lenses are very sensitive so removing a lens is a massive benefit Okay. So that whole argument you just made is irrelevant because you are using a pinhole camera, which does really? not, by definition, does not have a lens to distort anything. That is okay, the point. Okay, can you show me pinhole because satellite? It's of it, pinhole? degraded over, because the lenses, just like in the ISS, it's actually really interesting to see on some of the old footage. The lenses degrade over time, including the CMOS sensors in the cameras themselves, and they make little snowflakes, which is very interesting. And it's very, very harsh for computers up there. And so the minimum part you can use is what you should use. And so when you remove a giant point of failure, if you send a thing, you spend, you know, a ton of money, you send up a thing, you don't want it to be dead in a few months because it's being hit by radiation all the time and solar rays and all other kinds of bullshit. You want to remove all the parts you can. The lens is a very big part. And because of that, you don't get distortion. Not that that's what they're testing for. You're not disproving flat earth with the satellites, but it's just a, a side effect. Okay, so what do you say? What, what uh... What, what satellites are you saying goes to space and sees the Earth with pinhole cameras? What do you mean, what satellites? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you about. talking I about like, like a I classification just it up and name? Doesn't, what? It's not, it's not a mainstream satellite, what's it? These are personal projects. Oh. It's not a class satellite. It's an ESPA class satellite. It's on a multi-distribution center. So they put it in a rocket, and then they, they're basically just attached like bricks, and you stack them together like this, and then they get shoved into a rocket, and you shoot it up into space, and then it opens up, and they all go... Pfft, and then they're all out in space. It's not. It's not like a whatever satellite. I don't know the class names. There's a, a Japanese one that does weather. It's not a a corporation. It's More. not. A, it doesn't have a class name. It's just like D three whatever ID they gave it from the company. Okay. So how high There's is no... it? How much curvature do you see? Have you actually seen these? Or are you just saying Have you actually seen the pictures? Thing. Yeah. What's it? I hang out with him. I just had like a ton I don't of care about you having like, friends last man. week. Please stop saying that. No, no, but what's it? It's not I'm having friends. It's this is a direct field that is related. We I've gone in this is a thing. You can go on my Instagram and I have pictures of stuff. I like, know people that have done it that it's think a dope thing with it. So done that's what? Just a weird argument. Done okay, what? If you that have sent up cubes, our private sa satellites, and even rockets, 60 that miles. That sounds not I know true. I'm sorry, rockets, but that just miles. sounds... I don't care about rockets. What's it? Let oh, so rockets, rockets with cameras 60 miles. Are you talking about Mad Mike? lower than that. Hey, Are I you talking about Mad Mike? I can't hear what's it. Uh, um, can you just calm down a little bit, Dale, please? If, if yeah. I sent Are something... You... 60 miles. Are you Ooh, saying that that wouldn't give me better evidence or lack thereof than something lower than that? No, but I don't know why you're talking about Flat Earth sending flat earthers sent up a rocket that isn't Mad Mike. I was making a point. Mad Mike wasn't but they a flat earther. Do it then. Oh well, I guess I was not. making. Was a, I was making a point though. Man, keep, keep, keep invoking your friends. I, like I don't care. It's not I, my I haven't said. It. Oh, I have a friend that, they, oh. that works on satellites that says the Earth's flat because that's right. that's not an actual argument. That's a but fallacy. They don't, what's it? 
what's it? I'm just bringing up as an example. They own a comp. You can go to the company right now. It's not okay. my friend from the bar told me that he likes to build satellites in his garage in his free time. It's here's the company. I can give you their contact details. I can give you the product specifications you need to build the satellite to to be able to be viable for launch. This is not dude in a bar that told me he's super epic. This is again okay. a corporation. Dude, the whole the whole time we've been talking, you've been talking about satellites, okay? And and you don't even know how high it is. You don't know how much of the curvature. Show. So can we talk about actual is. evidence, man? Because we have direct observations on the Earth where we see mountains from 255 miles away, where the entire mountain should be blocked by curvature, and we send radio transmissions thousands of miles. We send lasers dozens of miles. We what's tested. What are lasers surface. made out of? What's it? What are lasers made out of? What are lasers it made out of? Starts with like, an L. It starts with an L. What is it made Why out of? Why are you changing the subject? What's it? You just said lasers. What are lasers made out of? What are lasers made out of? I get what you're saying. I get your saying. Made out of light. light what's it? Yes. Yeah. What's it? It's a known yeah. fact. Yeah, we understand, even understand refraction. refraction. I know way more I don't about it. Care what's it? I don't need to understand so because you're I know. What you're what's saying. it? What's okay, it? I, I can't hear you guys. You guys are talking at the same time. What's it? Go uh, ahead. I was saying, I think it sounds like you're ignorant on the position. Like, I get that you think it's refraction, but basically what you're saying is, and for the audience to understand, when we see the mountains hundreds of miles away, or when we shoot lasers too far, you're saying that the Earth acts in just a way via refraction to give us this huge illusion that makes the globe look exactly like it would if it's flat, and then shows us mountains that are obstructed by multiple miles of Earth curve lifts them up and makes it look flat where we can see all the mountains. Is that what you believe? No, because it doesn't look flat with it. You, you see the tops of buildings. If it was flat, you would see the building. You don't see that. You see the tippy part of a thingy at some point sometimes. Like, that's no. it. In the picture you showed in your intro, with it. When you see the city, you don't see the city. You see the tallest skyscrapers. That is completely consistent. That's not inconsistent. You no, don't the curve is supposed to block all of them. What? No, it's refract. What's it? If the Earth is flat... It's not going to magically just show what we predict on a globe. And moreover, the entire point of science, contrary to what others say here, is that you don't have to do everything yourself. You write a paper and then people test it and you can build off of that. That is how. That is the point of science. I don't want yeah. to have to go back and learn about basic refraction so that magically it can make me a headset that projects holograms in my room. We understand it obscenely well. There's no, no, there's no, I don't need to understand it personally to know that these people are using it in a practical way and they disagree with you. We don't the understand magic, it extremely like well. I, I just said I don't understand it. What's no, that? no, the people you're talking about, the people don't. The subject that matter use it to build doesn't. photonic lenses that project holograms in my room don't understand it. Okay, but can you I respond? do. Go can ahead. I respond? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the reason that's not the same is because that's Snell's law, which is one medium to another. A lens is a different type of medium. Yes, we understand how light interacts with lenses very well. That's not the same as a singular medium where we just try to guess. I actually, we emailed the subject matter expert, Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University, the subject matter expert for atmospheric yeah. refraction. He explains we don't understand it. He's like, dude, we don't completely understand atmospheric refraction at all whatsoever. We have to use a differential of Snell's law. It's just okay. It has its own problems, and we don't really understand what's going on in the atmosphere. So that's not the same as someone using refraction with lenses based on one medium to another with a very verifiable, repeatable type of science. I don't deny that we understand refraction from medium to medium. You don't understand on the earth. And objectively, when we see the mountains hundreds of miles away, you have to believe those mountains are completely blocked by earth curve, but that the mountains get lifted up in an illusion and look like we can see them from hundred miles away. And it makes it look like there is flat because we can see all the way to the shoreline of the mountains. That's what you have to believe. That's are not you talking belief. about the person that made the curve calculator that includes refraction and disagrees with you says that you're right. The person uh, that, by the way, check out my GitHub, liked one of my projects and we talk a little bit. Are you really going to make that claim with it? Really? For, you know, the software is open source, just like make mine. the Earth Curve Calculator. No, no, no. That was Walter Bislin. And Andrew Thomas Regard. Young, yeah. he is he the subject matter expert in refraction. Yes, I am aware. He admits we don't know what it is. Yes. Okay. So stop saying right. we know it exceedingly What's well. It? That's What's, the... it? What's it? I personally do not need to specialize in anything other than the thing that I do here. That sure. is the entire point of science. Yeah. When there is thousands and thousands and thousands of people that say that you are wrong that work in fields that include refraction in every single way and light oh. things like the what is it i don't know where it is it's some other hologram thing it's a cube and that does use one medium by the way that's not lenses and that plugs directly to the pc as a display we understand this enough to build technology you can't say it's wrong when we can take it we can take our understanding and make a new thing 
You can't. Man, it, I don't it think you're listening to me. I what? What's it? I, I just said it doesn't use a lens. I, I just said it doesn't use a lens. It uses one medium. There's not two. There's no lens. The Magic Leap has lenses. This does not. It's a separate thing. I'm so it has one medium thing. and it's using refraction. Yes, it refracts. It refracts the light back. And it's a prism, but it's one part. It goes like this through, so you can get a 3D effect through it. That's the entire yeah. point. Yes. Yeah. When we understand, those... yes, when we understand these concepts and we can use them to build practical things, some random person on the internet saying, nah, uh is not good enough. That's some not what person, I did. What's it? What have you built using this? Any, any, any concept of flat earth? What practical thing has anyone ever, ever built using Nothing. This? 99 of things, 99% of <laughs> things built doesn't require anything to do with assuming the earth's a globe. Every single what an thing insane... that I have in here uses things like gravity. Gravity doesn't, doesn't mean that, yes. first of all, gravity is an agreed upon average of going down. It's, not, that it's is... a measured average. It's not agreed okay. upon. It's a measured okay. number. Okay. You think yes. that debunks me? Do you know what my position on that is? Well, yes, I've heard you say the same thing like five it's times. It's intrinsically electrostatic. We have it's a down not electrostatic with it. First off, a lot of the machines I use are obscenely sensitive to electrostatics, and you would fucking know if it was that. Second name off, one that's not electrostatic. Second off, name one what? Name one piece of machinery that you use that's not electrostatic. I'm telling you right now. Second off, they have a common ground with it. Do you know what that you can't means? Name one. I just said all of them. What's it? They're all they electrostatic. Common, they have a common. Do you know what that means? Do you understand what that concept like you means? Ground you them in like first yes. grade electrical engineering. Do you want common I know what ground it means. means? Okay, yeah. so why would something that's over here get affected by something over here if it's all common ground? They're all get equal potential. By... Why would... You're saying it's causing gravity. That's what you think gravity is caused by, correct? There's a downward electric current on the Earth. Yeah. Yes, and that's what you're saying pulls things down, correct? It doesn't pull it doesn't, things I, down. I assume... What? It pushes. It pushes down. It pushes down. We have a measurable what? downward so electric it's like, current. It's like, so if I was standing, this paper's getting a lot of use. If I was standing on this, are you saying that it's like raining down on to like push down? I'm just telling you what's provable. You want to talk about no, science? I'm, I'm, can... I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So if I'm standing on the earth, more than this is your thing, right? This is flat Earth. You're saying that it's pushing down on me to keep me down, or downward it's pulling current, me down, yeah. Yeah. or it's pulling me down. No, there's a downward electric current that goes from the sky down to the earth. Right. But you're saying that's what gravity is. Is everything electric? In yeah. your model. In your model. Are you an electric universe person? No, you can't be because that needs a globe. Well, I it doesn't need a globe, but I would say everything's well, electric. So anyone not claiming it. I will say this, that in your paradigm of a globe, it will shift to a geocentric electric universe. Guaranteed. 100%. But, that's but the earth's also not a globe. So... Sorry. What? So why'd you'll you get bring, there. Why did you bring that up? With it? You'll get there, bro. You'll get there, bro. I don't you'll care about you. Do you, wait, wait, do you agree that science doesn't care about philosophical bias or religions or anything like that? It's just what is the facts? What can we test? If we have a hypothesis and the evidence disproves it, we throw our hypothesis out. You agree science yeah. is like antithetical to religion. I agree that what you said as an example is like a high school level of scientific method. But if you're talking about does it use those things no it's meant the entire purpose of it is to cut out biases that's that's well, why it exists that's what I'm saying. yes that's what I'm saying. science yeah. is the process of cutting out feelings and emotions and getting the pure information regardless i agree of i agree with feel. you but that's not what they yes. do when it comes to the earth bro like like what whenever they saying. discovered that listen they said gravity is the bending and warping of space time that's relativity so that means this amount of mass makes this much gravitational effect then they looked at the sky and they saw the galaxies only had three percent of the mass that relativity predicted for the amount of gravity they saw so did right. they throw their hypothesis out and say uh the evidence didn't match our prediction no because it's a religion they said oh we'll come up with a new idea called dark matter we don't know what it is you can't see it it's called dark because we can't observe it but we'll keep our religion together because we don't want the earth to to be in the center and to have a special position that's what it is it's a religion it's the antithetical this is space do you see this yeah. there's something here you don't know what it is i don't think you could guess what it is you don't know what it is that doesn't mean there's nothing there just because you don't know what it is does not mean that we don't know that there's something causing something there is something here that is bending this paper in this shape right we know that we're not going to throw out the concept of my room because this shape we don't know what's under this paper no, we cool. know relativity is wrong. It made a prediction and it was wrong. What's it? Relativity is one of the most tested things we've ever. Oh done. my god! What's no, it? it's not. It was it literally is, it's applied. vital in satellite. <laughs> that again, going back to the CubeSats, this is like 
it's taken into account. You can't just say that. Uh. Actually, special also, relativity predictions a applied to you satellites. Would have never did it. That this was a ham. See, I know all about this stuff, man. I'm sorry. You no, raised the wrong one. If we talked for What's seven it? hours, I would correct you on every What's part it? of it. Special What's relativity's it? predictions for satellites didn't yes. work, actually. Someone had to come in and fix it with a brand new mathematical construct because special relativity didn't work for satellites. I'm not talking about special. What's it? That's what's used for satellites. See what I'm saying? And, and and the point is that dark matter is not a real thing. It's a religion, bro. What's it? See, I, if just I come up with a theory. The concept. Hold on, I just uh, Del, let, let, Del, just you. let him finish his thought real quick. All right, go ahead. Right. Think about it. If I come up with a theory and then I go find some evidence and it contradicts my theory, dude, I have to throw my theory out. Okay, that's science. The evidence doesn't care what you think or about your feelings or your opinions or what everyone else thinks or we'd have to go back so much. Science is just what the facts are. When we went and looked at the facts, it debunked our claim of relativity. It debunked what we thought the universe was. And that was over a century, that was a century ago, 1933, so just under 100 years. And they still don't know what it is, still can't define it, but they instead of thinking maybe relativity's wrong, maybe our assumption about the universe is wrong, they keep their religion <laughs> of the Copernican principle, and then they just make stuff up. And that is not science, bro. Do you understand how your truck works at a very basic level? Sure. Like a car, okay? Do you understand it from a complex level? Could If I gave you a bunch of scrap metal, could you build a working Ford? No, Probably not. not. I. It doesn't matter if you can't, because when you sit your ass in your truck or whatever you have, it'll go. It doesn't matter if you're brain dead or a dog or a chicken hitting the gas pedal. It's going to go forward. The understanding is irrelevant to the concepts that work. I don't care about the philosophical. I don't care about that. The point is, when you demonstrate it practically using technology, it does not matter. You, have you can't demonstrate the bending and warping of space and time. You can't demonstrate length contraction that all objects and matter are contracting in, in motion. What's you it? can't demonstrate these things. It's a theory. It's a philosophy. What's it? What's it, please? I'm sorry. Can you measure this length is, contraction? Do you know what that is? Depending on your reference frame, what's it? This is like... Oh, no. <laughs> this is like... No. Depending on your reference frame, what's it? I, Where just, can I, I didn't say measure? no. I said depending on your reference frame. Who's and measured this it? Is, this, this is like... Base, this is like Googleable. I don't know why you're bringing this up. This is like I could open it and Google it. This is not. Dude, I don't have to Google it, dude. I read no, no, your it? religion. I'm telling listen, you, man. I don't Google that's, your religion. I it? read the leaders of your religion. I that's don't it? need to Google anything. That's not look, what I look, said. Look, look, look. That's not what I someone. said. Look, I read your religion, dude. I don't okay. Google it and What's read it? mainstream What's articles. It? I read the the leaders of it. Okay. What is? Wait, hold up that other one. The first, the second one. You should read this book. Yeah, that one. What is that? You should read. Oh it. God, I thought that said Ken. I'm sorry. I was gonna have to yell at you for having a Ken Wheeler book. Jesus. No, his books are free anyway. You should also read this left. one. Do what? The mod said Lightness something. And Look, all I'm trying to say, man, is like well, it sounds it? Hold crazy, on, the, mod, but, the moderator guy said something. What did he say? That we have 13. Oh, we got a few more seconds left. Oh. Just go ahead and wrap it up. Oh, let me just say well, this to you, man. Do you, okay, I, I think that I I think I would have a beer with you or something, man. Like I don't dislike your yeah, name. All I'm saying you. is I think you would be surprised that it's not as scientific as you think, and maybe you're letting people make philosophical decisions for you. And if you were in a cult of philosophy, you would probably not want to just blindly believe it. I don't think so. You know, look into it or don't, man. What do you mean philosophical? The idea that the earth can't be special or unique and it has to be like in this random position. That's a philosophy. But if we're this tiny little ball in this massive galaxy and we're the ones that have life, that is a billion times more amazing than a shit flat earth that's a tiny little like aquarium. Like <laughs> as God, I would do something that's amazing and giant that we can explore for the end of time as humans, as opposed to making a tiny little like snow globe. What if the like, earth is so big, big that you could have to explore it for the end of time? Are you talking about like extra land? Yeah. Yeah. And there is I, extra land. That's what all the other, extra other people say. What's up? That, Look at there, man. That's what you say or that's what the other people say? That's what people throughout all of history said until the last hundred oh. years. Oh. Well, yeah, because we didn't have like, you know, good maps. We had You like, mean government telling us that you know, we, can't we had leave a like circle. sea monsters drawn on our old pictures. Like that's not a real thing. We had the like, Kraken den over here that you can't go by. That's not scientific. That doesn't mean there's a Kraken that the government's hiding the Krakens. Like that's okay. That's, again, no, now we goofy. have a circle that, that says you can't leave your circle like the Hunger Games. And the slaves are arguing with the other slaves saying the there's no oh, circle. <laughs> that was a pretty good analogy. I'll give you that one. Yeah. That was pretty good. Nice. You guys ready for the Q and A now? Yeah, go go for it. Yeah, I do. Have, I do have to like use the bathroom. Is there any way I can get like a minute? Sure. I'm sure, sorry. Sure. Or I'll, I'll try to hold it a little bit. 
maybe when he gets a question, I'll dip off. I think it's like thirty minutes, so it's not. You just feel the whole. If you if you want to go ahead, I'll just make some announcements real quick and uh, do the uh, the ad. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, man. Whatnot. No problem. Um, so yeah, I just want to let everybody know once again that uh, our guests are linked in the description below if you like what you heard tonight. Uh, so whether you're listening on YouTube or via the podcast, they are linked in the description. So go ahead and check them out as soon as you can. And I just want to let you guys know about tomorrow's debate once again on uh, at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, Religion, Race, and Society. That's going to be Daniel Hakikachu versus J.F. Garipe. And they're going to be crossing swords here tomorrow night. So just don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can check out all those. And uh, I just want to also let you guys know that we'll be doing a after show on my channel tonight so if you uh want to hear the conversation keep going if you want to participate it'll be an open mic so uh the link to join will be there in the description below of that video so if you want to continue the conversation come on over and check that out um link in the description below once again and uh i guess that's all the announcements i have uh dell you want to say anything to the audience about your channel what do you do over uh, there i post um not very frequently. Usually it's just mirrors of things I do in other channels. And then some of the work I do with machine learning, uh, like a synthesized voice cloning that I'm working on that uses a neural networks to generate like realistic speech. I've progressed, like shown progress of that. I posted like a year ago. It sounded really creepy and now it's basically indistinguishable. But other than that, I don't, I don't make very much YouTube content. Got it. Um, yeah, somebody just pointed out that there is no link for you in the description. So now that is fixed, ladies and gentlemen. So now there should be a link there. If you uh, refresh it, you should be able to see it there now. Um, and what's it is back. Awesome. So we will go ahead and get into the Q&A. Um, just so you, it's fair. Uh, what's, do you want to just tell people real quick what's on your channel? Uh, whatever YouTube allows. No, I, we talk about all <laughs> kinds of stuff. We, we don't just talk about the earth. We talk about... Uh... A bunch of a bunch of topics so it's pretty cool we have a school in the globers session so maybe some a some school in the can learn about their belief and decide if you think it's true but yeah we talk about a bunch of uh urban subjects awesome excellent okay so i'm putting uh 20, 35 minutes on the clock and we'll go ahead and kick it to the question and answer section so the first question comes in from kango 44 for 50 bucks new zealand they say what's it new zealand is 1600 kilometers across in it's in full sunlight two hours before Sydney, Australia. Auckland, New Zealand is 2,000 kilometers from Sydney, so sunlight stops 400 kilometers short of Sydney for a couple of hours. Why? Because, uh, actually, the sun appears to be like I know you guys are gonna get triggered, but it appears to be like a projection. We took the azimuthal and declination readings from a longitudinal uh, position all around the earth. Um, for an entire year and we mapped it out on a flat projection and it works perfectly as a toroid. So it seems to be like a position relative to the observer in the torus field. And you can also take a container, put a light over top of it and it covers a certain amount of the earth. And also I don't claim a map. If they, if they did hypothetically lie about the earth, it would be ignorant to think we have like a perfect map that doesn't even make sense. So. Got it. Thank you so much. Uh, next question coming in once again from Kango 44 for 10 bucks, New Zealand, they say, Sony announced the launch of a project called Star Sphere, which allows users to rent a satellite camera in space to take photos of the Earth freely. So, yeah, that's I get, I get the claim. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure Samsung also had satellites in space that crashed and were actually connected to balloons. <laughs> but I mean, even if they send something up in the sky, I don't dispute that. That you could use like solar powered uh, drones that can stay in the sky for long periods of time. I don't dispute that you can send things into the sky. Um, and I don't believe any type of pictures that have imposed convexity, right? We can test the surface of the earth here. So it's a, it's a misnomer that I deny that flat earthers deny you can put stuff in the sky. We don't believe any claim about going out into a vacuum thousands and thousands of miles away, which is why I continually asked the height they go. But anyway. Got it. From Ozean Talks for $5, they say, why do surveys only work when up to 100 miles I'm sorry. Why do surveys only work up to 100 miles according to your evidence? What is your uh, IV and DV to demonstrate it is an accurate measurement? Yeah. 
So that's independent and dependent variable. Um, measurement isn't oh, science. Cool. Math is a description. Science is an explanation of a cause and effect relationship. Measurements are not independent and dependent variable related at all. But uh, yeah, we take a, a vertical plumb, we establish a local horizontal, so the perpendicular to the plane, and we take measurements. And then, of course, assuming the Earth's a globe, as you increase distances, you're going to have to make like assumed calculative corrections. Um, so they, they, any practical use case, you're going to measure in small increments. So for a hundred square miles, that's plenty for engineering, which is why all real life engineering where people's lives are at stake, it uses plane survey. We take physical measurements of the earth as a plane in order to do engineering, which is the point. So. Uh, got it. And the next question coming in from Kango 44, once again, from 50 bucks, New Zealand, they say, what's it? Given you have no formal education in math, physics, geology, surveying, engineering, optics, computer graphics, et cetera, someone could tell you pretty much anything and you could believe it. So why, why anyone would listen to you? I covered that in my opener, my bro. Do you spend 50 bucks to say that? That's called a credentials fallacy. The credentials fallacy is a logical fallacy that occurs when someone dismisses an argument by stating that whoever made it doesn't have proper credentials, so their argument must be wrong or un unimportant. Right. Nikola Tesla dropped out of college and literally changed all of electrical field theory for, you know, the remaining history of mankind. So it doesn't really matter what my credentials are. It matters what the actual substantive argument presented is and what the empirical evidence states. Um, and then you add Hami in there as well, saying I would just believe anything that's not true. I don't believe in fairy tales about how there are an infinite amount of planets and galaxies in the ever expanding universe of nothingness. So I don't I don't just believe anything. I actually need empirical evidence. Ironically, you believe anything. Got it. Thank you so much. And then from Alan Beaupre for $5 Canadian, they say, what's it? How can the flat earth be falsified? Uh, repeatable physical measurements of tangible earth curvature. If you could physically prove an actual tangible earth curvature, this whole debate would be over. If you could physically tangibly verify the radius value, but you can't, which is a problem as you're making that positive claim. So. Got it. Uh, Del, do you want to uh, just say anything about that one since we don't have many questions for you coming in? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll take the next one. I have to go. Somebody's at the front of the house. I'll be right back, like 30 seconds. Oh, okay. No I guess worries. just keep doing questions. Oh, I'll be back. Yeah, and then I, yeah, yeah, I'll, the I'll be up to, to say stuff on the side after he's done. I'll be back. Found one comment. Okay. Um, all right, Austin. One more for you. From Malavia for $2. They say, Austin showing again how remedial uh, his understanding is. I'll just add on, man. The truth is, man, let's be real. I understand the globe better than 99% of people that believe in it. So, like, we don't have to lie. It makes it weird. And then from All Zach right. Harrington. For... All right. Welcome back. Uh, Zach Harrington for 4 dollars They say, what's it? Stop cherry picking Ken Wheeler and Einstein. Neither support your position. You are using the principles of science to try to debunk science. Okay. Cherry picking means if you read it in context, it would refute the position that I invoke. And that's not what happens at all. And I invoke Einstein to actually elucidate the ignorance of the people that defend the globe, right? They don't have a justified belief. They believe the earth is this globe model, but they don't know what it is. They don't even understand it. It's like someone telling me the Bible's true, but they've never read Genesis. It's just a weird religion. It's a cult. So I bring up Einstein just to show what the religion actually says, like what the belief is, which is that you can never prove the earth is orbiting the sun from the earth. It's just a belief that we have. It's philosophical and blah, blah, blah. Like that's the only reason Einstein's brought up is to correct the misnomers regarding the globe model. So. All right. Del, do you want to just take a quick second to respond to that one? Uh, I mean, I don't know if cherry picking is a good word, but maybe selectively. I, I, does cherry picking imply dishonest? Is that like deliberately lying or. Yeah, pretty so much like your intention. Okay. I, I don't know about that. I, I, I heard somebody call you a con man too. I don't know about that. I yeah, think it's more definitely. just, I don't want to say misunderstanding, maybe maybe stupidity over ignorance or over malice. I don't think you're like deliberately trying to do anything sketchy. At mm -hmm. least for, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't think the earth is flat and you're just scamming people. I don't know, but I don't think that. I think you're generally just kind of off on the side somewhere. Yeah, that wouldn't be but, a very profitable market plan, would it? No, it probably would not. Let's let Austin just have the quick last word and then we'll move on to the next one. Austin, do you have anything else you want to say about that? No, nah, I mean, obviously I, I went and tested the earth and I know it sounds crazy to even dare question it, but I went and tested it myself 
And um, yeah, they lied Sorry. about the earth. I mean, you know, it's not for everyone. Flat Earth's not for everyone. So. All right. Uh, from Mark Reed, uh, for five dollars American, I believe. Uh, amazing, or maybe Australian. Sorry. Um, amazing work on the debate, Dell. You showed Austin he had no idea what he's talking about. Would love to see a chan see a channel and see more of your debates. Yeah, I have yeah, a fan out there. I have one from Modern Day Debate uh, mirrored on my channel, and then one. I don't know. I don't think it's. I don't know if it's flat Earth related. It was with some weird schmo. His name was like Smo, and he was some religious guy that was talking about flat Earth, and he was trying to use it to justify his geocentrism that was also like heaven here it was very odd so if you want to get like high and watch something funny that's what you should do um i might make debunking content if people actually are interested in that <laughs> but it's it's fun i enjoy it it's a good time awesome from dario uh durick for five dollars i say all the proof that globies have is math and theoretical do you have physical evidence of a globe not just cgi pictures from nasa well yeah because you know CubeSats that I've done, the ISS thing that I personally did out in the field in the cold. Uh, I mean, I don't know what else you want besides like literally showing it and then also verifying that a space station is there. But other than that, no, I have no physical proof that's not from NASA besides those things that are not from NASA. Got it. Thank you so much. And then from Chainsaw Cat for $10, they say, Dell, uh, you should throw in the towel. You are out of your league. I do have um, a towel somewhere, but... <laughs> It's covered in alcohol from washing my nice. board. Rubbing alcohol, from, not like booze. From Rad Crad for five dollars, they say, What do you think the actual reason for the world's governments lying about Earth the flat earth? Why would they lie and what do what do they seek to gain by it? Honest question. Why did why did the government lie about there being weapons of mass destruction in the Middle East? Like asking me why the government's lie is insane. In fact, I would ask you, why would you believe that? NASA is the one federal governmental agency that doesn't lie. But yeah, there's all kinds of motivations to lie. Like I said, if you've ever seen the Hunger Games, there's something called a 60th South Latitude. They drew a circle around you. Private free exploration beyond that is literally illegal. They have to give you permission to do it. So in the scenario that there was extra land and they don't let you leave it, I don't see how you wouldn't put that together. And then they always say you can go, but you actually objectively can't go there without their permission. So that's one of the reasons. There are many reasons. I mean, this is one of the things. Look, I'm going to say this real fast, but say that I discovered that my parents adopted me, right? And then I go up to my friend. I say, look, dude, turns out my whole life's a lie. My parents adopted me, right? And and you're like, wait, that's crazy. Let me see the evidence. I show it. And you say, well, who are your real parents? And I say, I don't know. And the person responds, oh, well, until you know who your real parents are, I don't believe you're adopted. That would be really weird. And then if you say, well, why did your parents lie to you and say they, that you weren't adopted? That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So um, that's my long way of explaining with a rudimentary analogy that that's kind of independent of if they did lie or not. But uh, yeah, it's, it's your own journey, man. All right. Got it. From uh, Chainsaw Cat. I'm sorry. No. From Sunflower for $5. They say, Dell, sacred geometry or not, the flower of life is just a geometric pattern of overlapping circles of an equal radius in 2D space. Why is that funny? The flower of life is what? What is it? Is it? Does it have some kind of like, because you're calling it sacred geometry? Is it some kind of spiritual thing? Like when I it's go into this, to Matt, I'm asking you actually what's it? Like I am wondering. Like it's just like this perfect you know about it, balanced apparently. geometry that's seen throughout all. Of is nature. it called sacred just because it's like really perfect, or does it have some yeah. kind of spiritual? Okay, so it's not literally god like sacred math. like a god no. okay because i when you said that i was like what the hell are you talking about it? Yeah. but yeah no I, I get you you're good but yeah right. i guess it's funny because i thought it had to do with like sacred god or something math i don't know it's a funny word oh there's some uh overlap mm -hmm. here um how did that happen okay uh from Kango44 for 10 bucks New Zealand, they say, What's it? Uh, they think that your knowledge is poor. Um, Delco has actually done stuff and it easily debunks your rubbish. Uh, your only response is that people who do stuff are lying. I didn't say anyone lied though. So, wow. wow. You know what's weird is that you just lied. That's what's weird. You watched the debate and then you lied about what happened. 
like actually do stuff. Yeah, I actually do stuff. I take multiple time lapses of the star shells over the ocean and they never intersect with the marine horizon, which they should if the Earth's a ball. I actually take long distance observations. We've done laser tests. We actually do actual testing of the surface of the Earth. Everyone that believes the globe does nothing but talk behind the keyboard. So it's easy to conform to consensus and what's popular is not true and what's true is not popular. So that's not really my, my problem. I don't have a problem with him. I don't have a problem with, I know he believes that his friends send satellites to space, but he's never thought the question, how high do they go and what are the limits and what do the government allow you to do and how, how long are they up there, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, believe what you want to believe, man. Just understand that you're in a belief system. Okay. Um, one second just checking to make sure i have all the questions in line okay great um halfway crook for five dollars they say a guy in the field explains in detail to witsit and he just denies it one army guy says yeah it's flat witsit believes him why would what would convince him none I specifically said that I don't bring up my friends in the military, which I know multiple, or my friends that are pilots, or the astrophysicists and former astronomers and aerospace engineers that work on satellites that say the Earth's flat. I don't bring these people up because what other people think or the fact that they have some credentials doesn't actually substantiate the position. That's a fallacious argument. That's the reason I brought it up. And when you say he explained it in detail, he didn't even know the height that these things supposedly go. And then he went to set the, it went to space which of course they claim is the Carmen line, which is 60 miles, 100 kilometers, 62 miles, which is an arbitrary determination. Not even all countries agree. So what is space? How high did it go? What did they see? These are important first first base questions if you're going to say it proves zero a ball. So, um, I mean, I guess you should rewatch the debate. Maybe. All right. Um, and moving on. Next question from Toby Walker for $20. They say, Dell, why does the magnetic field from the theoretical convection currents in your geodymo, geodynamo, geodynamo, not align, not align with your proposed rotational axis. Axis, sorry. <laughs> let me just start. Why over. does it not align? Yeah, yeah, let me let me start over because I have no more. idea. Why but does... if it was fake, they wouldn't make it up to be inconsistent. That would be stupid. Yes. Why? Why you does it not Google align with your proposed the... rotational axis, but also not provide a consistent field and not shift on schedule as theorized? Well, I guess you should Google that or ask somebody who knows, because if it was fake and a conspiracy, they wouldn't make an inconsistency to where people would go, hmm, why is this obvious thing obvious? That would be stupid as a conspirator. So oh that's God. dumb. Well, I mean, it was, if you're trying to hide something, you're not going to deliberately add these giant plot holes into your thing so the people like, that's silly. They're trying Especially to explain real evidence. evidence. Like, the, you know, no, I know have, but do we have real it, evidence? What's it? Just because... I don't know about a specific topic. I've already given yeah. you, first off, a ton of stuff in my field. I don't venture into other fields because I'm not an expert in that. And right. I'm perfectly happy to say that. He's asking right. you a question that, according to like the top levels of your own paradigm, isn't known. So, to be fair, yeah, no but, but, one but knows. I, my answer is I don't care. Okay. Because it's not relevant. Because it's, it's first off, I'm sure it's you figured it out. Second off, it's not relevant because if it was fake, you would make it a consistent story. No, oh, you have to it's use real bad. evidence. That's why they can't make it fake, dude. My gosh, they have to use real life evidence on the. Are surface you saying that they to... took real measurements and they tried to like bend it into a ball? Is that what your point is? Yeah, yeah. Or that they made up the entire thing and then it's. Just... We can measure the Earth's magnetic field on the surface, so they have to try to make it work with their I, dynamo yes. model. They can't I just lie the... about the magnetic data. You and I can go take it, take that data. All right, let's let let's, 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 let's say, have the last word on that because I believe that question was for him. So let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, uh, for Mark Reed, for five dollars, they say, "Show the measurements you have done to measure the downward electromagnetic force you claim exists, and how you have performed experiments to prove it." I never claimed I performed experiments to prove it, but you can just look up the Richard Feynman lectures on atmospheric electricity. It's well known. You can use many different things to measure the downward electric current of the Earth. It's very weak. I think it's like one micro micro amp per square meter or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's it's just objectively there. There's a downward electric current on the earth. You can measure it. Um, so you should just look up your own paradigm, like, you know, Richard Feynman, atmospheric electricity lectures. They explain it pretty well. And that would create a downward bias. You know, and that's all that I'm saying. All I'm doing is acknowledging what is provably there. So. Okay, got it. Then from Flat Earth Nation, I believe, FE Nation, for $5, they say, question for Dell. You said scientific facts. Show one experiment with water sticking to the outside of a spinning ball. 
Well, first off, fact as in colloquial, as in it's ridiculous to debunk or like, you know, it's not literally a fact. You never prove things. You want to keep things open. That's the entire point, right? That's why Einstein got famous. It's not from control. That's okay. So why would labs pay people to repeatedly confirm the same things over and over again? I don't get why people think that. The whole entire point is to learn something new and to break what we already understand. That's that's the point of science is to, to move forward. And just like Witsit said, it doesn't matter about feelings. It doesn't matter how sacred our globe or whatever. If we're presented with real evidence, it would change, right? Because feelings don't matter. The problem is there is no real evidence. There were 10,000 mile transmissions, whatever. Well, what's it? we already went over that. You ignored it. Okay. No, I, I explained it. I told you two ways to do it. I did okay, think I, I gave you two examples All right, of it bro. being done. No. All right. Um, what else do you want? You got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, from Dario uh, Jurek for uh, $5, I say, Dell. Hmm. Dell, I do robotics and automation, and I can certainly say that it doesn't require me to believe that the Earth is a globe. You lie. Well, no, that's called the... I don't want to be mean. I'll say grease monkeys. Um, there's a difference between taking some pre-installed selection from KUKA and installing it into a building and actually developing, like, an in part or an embedded system that utilizes things on, like, two micron levels to where gravity and other things do become an issue. Um, and also I'd be interested because that's saying robotics and automation is fairly general. And I questioning that because that is a core value in everything, including the autonomous inertial compensation that I work on for bipeds, which requires gravity and not just down. So if those things are walking, it ain't flat and they're walking. So there's your answer. I'm not concerned with people, what they say that they get one of the pre-made cells from KUKA and they go in and install it or they go and update the firmware. That's not, I try not to be rude. That's not good, a good expert in the field. I'll say that. All right. From Earth's first space later for $5, they say Austin can explain why a Celine Lion, Telenilion, Celine Leon debunks Celine a ball. Dion. Is it Celine Dion? Because there's an E. Maybe it's Celenilion. Cel Selenillion? Selenillion? Selenillion. Selenillion. Selenillion, it's a certain type of eclipse. Got it. Okay. Got it. Um, should we move on? What was, uh, the well, what's the, what was the question? Was it for him or for me? Probably for um, you. You disappeared. Hello? He's asking you, like, how does a selenillion hello? eclipse work? Oh, he's know? here. Did it just... Okay, can you hear me? What's it? I can hear you. Because I think things just fell. All right. So I have no idea, and again, I really don't care. Oh. Do you? Would you want to know if the model of the Earth was wrong? Well, yeah, I'm interested. What's it? I'm not going to come up and take my free time on a what is it? A Thursday? If I on six o'clock started at four. Oh, welcome back. Starting at four. If I didn't like care. I obviously have effort put in, but yeah. the point being, I just look it up right now. Oh, look at that. They even have little graphics. That's the thing with these questions about globe earth. You can just, there's like a billion pictures that explain it. That's a diagram right here. Your like, lifetime believing what you Googled in front of the entire audience, bro. Yes. What's it? Because it's not my field of expertise. And I already provided you multiple examples in my field that show that the earth is a ball. This is a secondary question, even a tertiary question that some random person's asking. And it's not my field of expertise. So mm -hmm. what I did is I went on here and I looked at these cool pictures and they're all the same from different sources. So what that what tells that? us. Yes, what that tells us is that if multiple people, multiple companies are coming up with the same answer, that's probably the correct answer. And they I claim really that the, even though the sun and the moon are up in the sky during the eclipse at the same time, that it's actually an illusion. And when we see the sun during the eclipse in the sky at the same time as the moon's in the sky, actually the sun isn't there. It just looks like well, it's Well, yeah, I have a picture of it right here. With, I have a diagram. I've seen right the diagram. Here. It shows a straight yeah. line with curved lines below the globe, and it says yes. it lifts up optically. It's refraction. It's an illusion. It we live the in the atmosphere reflects light, illusion. making the sun and moon appear higher in the sky. And we know refraction exists in the atmosphere. So, move the, the entire deal? sun 
Let's let Austin have the last word on that, and then let's move oh, on. Go ahead. Well, well, they claim that the refraction moves the entire sun. So basically what that means is when you see a sunset, according to these guys, you don't actually see the sunset. It's already down below the earth. It just looks like it's setting. You never actually see the real position of the sun. It just is always an illusion. Every single time you've ever seen the sun, it's not really where you see it. It's always being refracted. As that's what they claim. And that to me, that's just insane, bro. Like, I don't, I don't just believe whatever I need to to keep a model alive. So, you know, teach their own. Okay, from Shawnee or Swanee, sorry, for five dollars to say, What's it? Is it possible for the earth to be so large that you can't see the curve? You claim it's flat, but it could be just so big you see no curve. Well, yeah, the radius would have to be like over a quarter million miles based on some of the observations we have, but that doesn't work though because the radius value has to be correct for like. The stuff he's claiming, like orbital trajectories of satellites, the radius of orbit of a satellite, for the gravity to, to be what it supposedly is, for the day-night cycle, for the seasons, for the distances from relative planets, blah, blah, blah. You could go all day. All of it depends on the radius value. So if that number is wrong, the entire model's wrong. You couldn't just say it could be a bigger ball. It, it can't be. Um, the whole model's wrong if that number's wrong. So. Yeah, that's why we falsify the R value, and that's why the government censors it, and that's why they prop up flatter society that misrepresents what we actually say, you know? So, I mean, pretty Those are a bunch of Ubers. Those guys are oh. stupid. I'm sorry. Why would they do that, though? Why would they promote, like, a fake story? Because they're stupid with it, because they, I think they get paid. Okay, so on shills, why, they're definitely sh because they get paid why? money. Because why would they money? lie about what we say, but they not get censored? I'm not talking why about do I get censored, but they don't get censored? Specifically them. I th are you talking? Is that the group with Mark Sargent and all them? Supposedly, Mark Sargent said, yeah, but I'm saying, yeah, well, Mark they, they Sargent say is crazy a plant. stuff. They He's a corporate stuff. plant for advertising, so that's I'm why. asking you, why do you think that I get censored, but Flatter Society doesn't get censored? Because he's a corporate plant that's used for advertising, and you're a person talking on YouTube. But why would they not? Why would they promote Flatter Society that says that we think we're a disc accelerating up? Because and he's crazy used stuff? as a marketing strategy. Mark Sargent oh, isn't a real flat earther. I'm making earther. legitimate points. Yes, and I actually have yes. a valid argument. Mark Sargent isn't a real flat earther. He's a person that they use for marketing, which is why he appears in commercials. And so he gets pushed up. And it's not. I think about if you're true or not. But that's why he's not censored is because he's literally a marketing tool. And like, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about the Flatter Society. I but... thought that's what that was, is the whole the whole meme of we have members all around the globe. Isn't that what they put out? Yeah. I thought that was They're... Mark and his buddy. His Patricia, yeah, why would you make Flat Earth look stupid? If it just really was stupid, wouldn't you just let like me just excel through the well, algorithms and everyone laugh at me? Well, no, because if Sony came up to you or whatever that company that does ads with them came up to you and said, do you want to make a mockery of yourself online for money? You probably would say no. But he's done that. Well, like he's been in ads is where they're like... Stupid. Right? After Wouldn't you just let the flat earthers be? One, okay. yeah, I'm just all I'm saying is, if flat earthers really stupid, you would let the flat earther, the real flat earthers, and what they really think, you'd let everyone see it and laugh at it and see how stupid it is. But I am heavily censored, bro. Like it's a laughing, like it's a joke that how censored I am, and that doesn't really make sense. I mean, we've seen the government likes to censor, like censor things that are true. I'm not saying that proves it's true, but it's just weird. It's weird that flat earths propped up via flat earth society but i'm like heavily censored i think that's weird personally but whatever okay next question from shane cup for 4.99 they say why are there why are there no real pictures of satellites why are they all cgi hmm could it be that they don't really exist what do you mean like in space or just oh. in general well i'll do both i guess <laughs> uh for in space because sending up a second satellite to take a picture of a satellite just to take a picture of a satellite is a stupid idea and that's really dumb and the second thing is i have seen them and i know a person that owns a company that makes them and i've seen them go away from me into a rocket and then leave that rocket and then get data back that i'm expecting from space so there i guess that's both answers both questions answered on that one got it from shiloh carpenter for five dollars they say Here's to buy a book about your religion so you can debate it. However, what is your biggest belief and what is your biggest belief that you live on a ball other than satellites? My big, like the best argument? Uh, yes, let's go with that. Okay. Uh, my best argument for living on a globe? Um, I mean, the pictures. <laughs> Even though, you know, like... How many, I don't know how many people, you could just Google average American amount of people who are photo forensic experts and then cross that with how many of them say that 
the earth or all the pictures of earth are fake and it's fairly minimal so that alone is enough to say well the pictures are probably real and then of course we could take pictures of the moon landing site from earth independently i mean i can keep going if you want it's all practical it's all stuff you can do yourself if you are that dedicated miscellaneous viewer you yourself can do these things all right from jay for 499 they say why don't you conduct the experiment described by t jump using a ham radio to measure the distance to the moon and verify the earth is round I if you think you that sending a ham radio signal to the moon verifies that the earth is round you don't have any business talking publicly in this conversation, bro. Okay. Secondly, you'd have to assume the duration of time is actually within a medium of assumed vacuum of space because you actually have to take the duration of time with the signal and the propagation rate to actually get the distance, blah, 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 which you just assume and beg the question of the vacuum of space. And even if you did send a signal to the moon, again, how would that prove the Earth's a ball? That's absolutely insane. Secondly, you would actually have to leave the moon because the Earth would be spinning underneath it, which they don't do. So what a, what a cool story. In 2.8 seconds or 2.4 seconds, the Earth Earth would spin underneath the ball the moon and it would always be relative to the time of year that you did it and uh, none of that's taken into account so it's just a whole bunch of uh cool story bro all right and the next question coming in from harry chair stepper for five dollars i say for witsit how can you go on about the science being a religion and then proceed to make up and believe your own baseless claims I don't just blindly believe anything. So that that's actually the point that you don't get. The only part that I, I blindly believe is I'm like, I, I adhere to some spirituality. Like I know that there's a creator and I have anecdotal evidence for it. And I know the necessary antecedent of creation is a creator and no one can debate me on crea creationism. But like, I, like when it comes to science, I don't make up stuff. I said, there's a measurable downward electric current on the earth. The father has electrical field theory. So there's electromagnetic background that sustains electromagnetic energy called the ether. It's the only way that it could work. I know that current science doesn't understand light, doesn't understand quantum, doesn't understand the cosmological scale. There's tons of holes. In it. I don't believe stories from other people that have philosophical bias. That's I don't I don't I suspend belief. Science is the opposite of that. So whenever you ask me to you ask me to speculate about like the earth or the sky and stuff like that, where I can't independently verify it. Then I speculate to turn around and be like, you're making definitive claims. No, I'm not. I'm, I admit what speculation. That's the difference. You guys claim that the belief you have is actual science when it requires blind faith. And that's why you're being corrected because you have a religion and you call it science. That's the problem. All right. How much time do we have left here? Five minutes. Okay, guys, uh, we have more questions than we have minutes left in this quick question and answer. So if you send any more uh, super chats from here on out. I'm just giving you a fair warning that there's a very good chance that it will not be read. Um, but do my best. Uh, if they come to the uh, after show, I will try to take any questions that were not super chats with me. Um, anyways, the next question coming in from Sky Scion for 499. They say Dell's only proof of physical evidence is a light in the sky, aka the International Space Station. Yikes! If the Earth was a globe, you could list way more than that, bro. I did. What was that again? My only evidence was what? A light in the sky? A light in the That's... sky. This the ISS. I know, actually. First off, I didn't talk about viewing the ISS. I talked about getting data from it myself when it's supposed to be there. I didn't look at it. I don't have any telescopes. So that's incorrect. Second off, like everything else I brought up, including the pictures and the satellites that are, again, that I did myself. This is like a college thing. It's not like, I don't know, it's not classified. It's college kids doing stuff for fun experiments to learn things. It's like, what else do you want? Here's pictures. Here's data that I received from space to this at the exact time I expected. Like, there you go. It's not just, I saw a light in the sky and that must mean that everything's real. That's not even close. That's a, I think that's a dishonest question. I don't I don't believe that's an honest inquiry right there. Okay. From Earth is Life for $20, they say, how does a flight from Dallas to South Korea and a flight from Johannesburg to Sydney take the same amount of time, yet on a flat Earth, they are vastly different distances? Yeah, the, the other flight, <clears throat> the second flight actually flies in jet streams, which can add up to three to 300 to 400 miles per hour to the plane. So... If you fly 900 miles per hour ground speed, even though your airspeed's 500 miles per hour, to have static air pressure around the plane, you would go significantly farther, wouldn't you? So, also don't make map claims anyway. But, uh, yeah, they, they fly with jet streams. 
All right. And then from Sky Sion, once again for 499, they say Dell saying Witsit like he's talking down to him. Yet it's obvious he barely knows about the globe and does not know how to debate the lo with logic. Yikes. So presenting physical, practical things that you yourself could do in your own home or pay to do isn't like proof. Also, I don't, Witsit, was I saying your name in a bad way? I'm sorry if it came off like that. Like, is, yeah, was I? Yeah, I don't, I, nah, was I'm, I saying I'm, your name incorrectly? I don't know. I, I, I don't know what that part is. The tone of your voice, bro. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what the hell that part's about. But uh, yeah, so there's that's. I guess that's the answer. I, I think you are a little part. overly cocky about this, but it's okay. I, I I understand why. So it's all good. Like, I don't think you're. I think compared to other people that debate this, you're like significantly cooler, honestly. So. Well, I try and not assume that you're deliberately malicious. I might be wrong, but that's what I start off with until shown otherwise. So there You'll get go. there, man. You'll be a flat earther one day, maybe. I don't know about that, but I'm fine with saying that you're a genuine person for now. You'll get there, bro. All right. Next question from Mark Reed for $5. They say, uh, Feynman, war Feynman worked in quantum gravity. So why do you appeal to an authority that disagrees with you and says the opposite? What? First, okay, dude. That's called an all or nothing fallacy. It's like if you invoke this guy, you have to believe everything he said or you can't invoke him. That's so stupid, dude. That's so stupid. Okay. If I invoke a hostile witness as to correct you people because you don't know what you're talking about, and it's not Richard <laughs> Feynman that says there's atmospheric electricity, it's objective. You can go out and measure it yourself. It's well known and provable. There's a downward electric current from the sky to the earth. It has nothing to do with Feynman. And yeah, Feynman actually is gives a bunch. He's like, the truth is that people in this realm, the anti-flat earth realm, they lie a lot. But the, the actual physicists, they're very blunt. They're like, oh, we don't know anything about quantum. Anyone that claims they understand quantum is lying or stupid. Like, oh, we, yeah, we have a huge gap. The Copernican theory could be wrong. Oh, the earth could be the center. But then you come in these circles and they're like, no, it's definitely a fact. We're a ball that flies through space and nothingness. So, yeah, that's whatever, bro. I, I brought him up to make the point that like you guys are in a cult of scientism and you're like, oh, the scientists say this. So I give you your little leaders correcting you to save time. It's called a hostile witness. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, we do have eight questions left on the list, guys. Um, I'm going to try to go through them as fast as I can. Um, if you guys don't one. mind. Um, the next question is from Nick for $5. They say for both, what if you broke a body of water up into in indefinite, infinitely small pieces and measured them all? What would we see? Nothing, because if you divided them infinitely, you would never get a chance to measure them. If you mean break them down to the point of where they're an atom, you would see an atom. I do you have an answer for that? What's it? I don't. If you I broke it down it, infinitely know. small, you would see nothing because it's infinite. So you would never reach the point where you're going to start measuring. I, I don't know. Water's all, water always finds this level. I don't, I don't know what he's asking. I don't get. I don't get the infinitely small part. I don't know what that implies. It's a contradiction in terms, to be honest. So. All right, from Earth is Light for $10, they say, Witsit, is there refraction in the black swan image? Refraction is actually technically uh, light from one medium to another. So technically, Snell's refraction, no. Snell's law of refraction, but uh, sure, there's always refractive effects in the atmos, yeah. But actually, when it's clearer, you can see further. The globe claims when it's clearer and we see further, there's more refraction. So to me, that's just another religious stance. All right, and then from Run Boston Bear for $19.99, they say, Austin, thanks for staying patient. Keep pushing back that the heliocentric deception. It's time that it's time that spells get shattered. Dell, thanks for playing. Look into this stuff if you care about the truth. Thanks, MDD. Is that a question for me? Technically, well, I guess I have going... looked into it because uh, you know, again, I I know it's getting repetitive at this point, but uh, you know, pictures, satellite, personally done. Ooh. There we go. Neutrino detectors is also something that's a new college project that's actually very fun. And you can actually draw out the shape of the sun from through the other side of the Earth using neutrinos. It's very interesting. Assuming and this spirit. is also something that you could build in your own home for, I, what is it? I think it's around 4000 to $7,000, which is fairly cheap for such sensitive equipment. It's a it's an old CERN project that they open sourced. It's very interesting. If you're interested for re doing real practical things and really actually learning, go build that. And assume the sphere. Well, you're not assuming it. You could. You, so you have the detector. Well, let's just, oh, and I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. All right. Well, All right. you can draw uh, a picture of it for... through the Earth. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. 
from Shawnee for ten dollars. They say, "I accept your idea that the globe Earth is wrong. I might not believe you, but I will accept it. But why would you say flat Earth is correct if you can't prove it's not just so large you can't see the curve?" Well, if the default position based on all empirical evidence is that the Earth is flat and stationary, and that's how we fly planes and how we use military equipment and how we use electromagnetic propagation and how we use radio transmissions and how we measure the surface of the Earth, and then we know we have a magnetic field, which always has a block domain wall or an inertial plane. There's always a plane through the magnetic field. Then the default position based on all empirical evidence, including water finding its level and we use sea level to get elevations, is that the Earth is a plane. So that's the default position using Occam's razor, that which assumes the least. So it has the least amount of assumptions. So that's the default position, a geocentric stationary plane Earth. Uh, and yeah, the globe Earth model is provably wrong. We tested the radius value. I mean, a bunch of people believe it. That doesn't make it real. All right. Uh, from Jabril NTP for $2 Canadian. Question, how many people have been in space in percentages? Uh, like I think they say like less than... 25 people have ever been past low Earth orbit in all of mankind's history. That sounds right. fairly incorrect. Alexa, how yeah. many people have been past low Earth orbit? From LosAngeles.com, more than 5 million people passed through the nation's airport security... I don't think that's correct. Alexa, stop. We're not going to get into that. Not that yeah, dude, it's it's past low Earth orbit. It doesn't count but we learned ISS, that 5 million people like pass through airport security every year. It's just the Apollo missions, bro. That's the only people that have ever claimed to go past low Earth orbit. So it's like twenty-four people or something. So. I think I read that one out of order. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um. Repeats below. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean there, Nav. Uh, Feynman. Yeah, I did read that one. Okay. Um. Yeah, read that one. Read that one from Samir Farsane for five dollars. They say, in order to communicate with spacecrafts twenty-four-seven, NASA uses a network of three antennas placed in different parts of the Earth. Why need three on a flat Earth? Are you serious? You're you're asking me why NASA using spacecrafts would do something if the Earth's flat, dude? I don't believe the governmental agency founded by Nazis that lie about the the international temperature recordings and doctored you know data all the way back to the fifties. I don't believe their stories. Go look at China's space agencies. Footage is provably fake. It's the stupidest cartoons I've ever seen. We've catched NASA lying all the time. They glitch out all the time. I don't believe NASA, bro. You think NASA is the only governmental agency that doesn't lie to us, bro? That's super sus to me. So, you know, you can't come to me like with NASA stories and ask me to explain them. That's that's ridiculous. All right. Excellent. So that is all the questions that so we've come to the end of the list. So I will take the other questions to the after show, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to come uh, and hang out with me and uh, hopefully one of the debaters will come and join me as well. Uh, that'll be an open mic that will be joining uh, starting about 10 minutes after we end here. Um, other than that, uh, both of my guests are linked to the description below. So please check them out. Uh, please do that now. If you have a chance, uh, I want to say thank you to James for creating this platform the moderators in the chat for keeping the uh, conversation elevated everybody in the audience who sent in super chats and questions and were civil i uh, just want to say once again uh, thank you to the debaters who are the lifeblood of the show thank you both so much for being here um yeah. and yeah it was fun oh, go ahead sorry thank you <laughs> um and so uh like it if you loved it share it if you want to spread it and subscribe we have many more debates coming your way you don't want to miss uh and remember uh keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable have a great night everyone Love.